Amy Harris, she's the Deputy Chief Medical Officer for England. Hello to you. Thanks for joining us, Doctor. Um, wash your hands. Surely we've gone past that by now. So, no, wash, wash your hands will stay important for months ahead. It's always important anyway for managing any sort of winter disease like flu, any respiratory disease. Mm. I think the other bit that's missed out on some of that advice as well is um, about uh, protecting other people, so not forgetting to cough into tissues uh, and sneeze into tissues and dispose of those safely as well. You were telling me as we were watching Ali's uh, piece just a moment ago that you have to meet 200,000 people to potentially meet someone who's got coronavirus. So, so just on average, and of course diseases, infectious diseases do not work on average, so we just need to approach that cautiously. But it was really just to say we've got 319 cases confirmed in the UK at the moment um, amongst a population of 65 million. Now, having said that, um, I know you'll have heard uh, almost certainly the Chief Medical Officer and the Chief Scientific Advisor noting that there's likely to be more cases now in the community and we recognise that. But as it is currently at the moment, we still have relatively few cases here, which of course is why we're still in the containment phase. Uh, Professor Whitty, who you're just referring to, um, said, currently the number of coronavirus cases compared to those with other illnesses common during winter was very very low but that will change very significantly as Britain approaches the tail end of winter and coronavirus cases grow uh, really quite fast. What are your fears? Uh, in, well obviously we will have significant numbers in a way which I think the country is not used to. This is the sort of thing that professionally we're trained for and very rarely see in, almost in a professional lifetime. Um, so large numbers of the population will become infected but because it's a naive population, nobody has got antibodies to this virus currently. Having said that, we know that 99% of those almost certainly uh, will get better and most people will have really quite mild disease. They will not need to be in hospital. They can be managed very safely and appropriately at home. Interesting that the figures that you were giving me there, suggesting that 1% of people that contract coronavirus will die because some of the figures that we were looking at last week, some of the percentages were saying much higher. So this is quite difficult and I think it's quite difficult for the general public to understand and it may be, just to warn uh, uh, viewers, that as we go forward, that number will appear to rise, the, 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 what we call the infection fatality rate may rise and then drop again. And that's all to do with how we count. It's not uh, that we're counting the wrong bits, it's just that in an early phase, it's easier to find people with coronavirus who are very severely ill. Uh, we, can, we have them, if you like, in, in our hospitals, in our healthcare systems, and we can count them easily. What's not so easy to count at the moment is the entire spread of disease in any country, it doesn't matter whether it's the UK, which is the number that we're counting uh, underneath the line, if you like. So the numbers will vary and uh, at the moment, actually, the UK uh, rate uh, for disease is very similar to the one, for example, in France um, and we have very good surveillance systems in place. Um, I want to have um, a COVID-19 test. Um, speaking on behalf of my viewers this morning. What do I need to do? Um, well, we wouldn't advise you to have one. Uh, uh, as far as I know, I haven't asked you, but I would ask you, have you been to uh, a hotspot area, a country where there's known circulating disease? Uh, have you been in close contact with somebody? So just at the moment, um, you are very unlikely to trigger a test, if you like. Um, as we go forward, actually testing becomes less appropriate anyway. So what we will move to when there are very large numbers of cases is a presumed clinical diagnosis. Um, so we will know that if people have uh, relevant symptoms, so uh, shortness of breath, high, high fever, a cough, um, and uh, general malaise, various other symptoms, that we will presume that they have disease because we know that is the predominant uh, disease circulating. Can I just pick you up on that, Doctor, if I may, please? When? There are very large numbers of cases. Yes. So that is where the science comes into this. And every day, and I would say almost every hour, um, our modellers are working to pick up, understand the latest cases, where they are, and work through very sophisticated modelling uh, to see what we're looking for is this very steep rise in an epidemic curve. So we expect the, a disease normally like this, a new one, will rise slowly, then it sharpens, it reaches the top and then it runs out of people effectively to, uh, to infect and the numbers start to come down again. And what we're trying to do and with uh, uh, measures uh, due to be announced shortly will be to try and bring that peak down so we don't have too many people ill all at the same time and push it forward a bit.
Why do we want to push it forward? So we want to push it forward a bit because uh, we want to keep control of it as much as we can. The and how more... do we push it forward? Well, well, so there are a number of interventions, and you will have heard the Prime Minister uh, talking yesterday about uh, the sorts of things that can be done, and we've seen them in other countries. So uh, many countries have put in interventions around gatherings and closing schools. We have looked at all of those and. in this country, and what we are looking forward to is uh, two, two particular things. One is about uh, safe uh, isolation of individuals who have mild symptoms, because we know that's the start of the disease. Um, and we're also looking very much at what we can do to protect our elderly, because those are the people who uh, are the ones most at risk. OK, so let me give you a scenario. Uh, my boys and their granddad want to go to the football on Saturday and my daughter and her friends want to go to a Justin Bieber concert on Friday. Should they be doing that? So at the moment we have made no uh, recommendations to stop doing anything that people should be doing on a normal basis apart from really good hand washing and really good respiratory hygiene. Um, I think as we move forward into this, as we've noticed, there are very few cases across the UK at the moment. So the chance of somebody meeting somebody else who has the disease and passing it on, passing the virus on, is still very small. That will change, which is why we keep looking at the modelling. But I think particularly in relation to some of the sort of sporting events outside, it's important for people to, to understand that uh, in an open-air environment, and I think our chief scientific advisor said this yesterday, uh, you're, you're out in the open, that in itself reduces the sort of uh, the life length of the virus, the viability, um, and so the risk drops, and you're still only very much within a small group of people. So stand two metres apart if you, if you want to reduce risk. Have you been to a football game? I ha not recently, but certainly when I was, when I was younger, yes. So with, you can't stand two metres apart? You can't, but you can still... You're out in the open air, and I think um, in most places there is a, a reasonable distance. And I say if people are practising really good respiratory hygiene, um, risks in the open air for those sorts of events remain very okay, small. But I was very specific about why I asked you in the way that I did. One of them was an open air event, one of them was yes. a closed event, and they were both towards the end of this week as opposed to today or tomorrow. Yes. So, uh, obviously, we're watching how those disease rates change and they're rising. I suspect they won't have risen very... They'll keep going up, absolutely, um, I still think we've Into got a little many bit of... hundreds or thousands? Uh, we will see thousands, I'm sure, in due course. I would be surprised if we see thousands. I'm trying to think where we are in the week. We will start moving that way, probably, so over we'll the next week. So we'll see many thousands of people infected by coronavirus? We will see many thousands of people infected by coronavirus. That's what we're seeing in other countries. And the important thing for us is to make sure that we manage those infections and make sure that uh, those individuals who are most affected, so our elderly people, particularly those with chronic underlying conditions, uh, get into hospital and get treatment, uh, and we support other people in the home environment. Uh, we've seen Italy in lockdown overnight. Um, could that happen here if we have many thousands of people infected? Uh, so it depends. Uh, what we're trying to do is, is, is really stick to the science. So more is not always better. Science is best. Um, and if uh, in this country uh, we are slightly ahead of Italy, we're looking at that modelling and what we would be hoping to do is manage, as I've said, that peak by potentially other interventions that would not be first on our list because the science tells us that um, so, uh, safe isolation of individuals who are symptomatic at home and then looking after our elderly people are likely to be the approaches that are most applicable in the UK. And I, I think in Italy, I was listening this morning to the radio and I noticed that the advisor there actually said uh, that the health system was very different. It's in provincial areas. It's, it's more fragmented, if you like. Uh, and in the UK, of course, we have one single... Uh, line of control for an event like this, uh, right through from government and right out to all our health services and local authorities. So I think we have a very sophisticated and prepared system to respond. They have a much older population as well in Italy. 25% of, uh, of the population is over 65. It's not the case, I believe, here in the United Kingdom. But a lot of people listening to you this morning, Doctor, are going to be quite anxious. What should they do today to protect themselves going forward, apart from washing their hands? So I'm, I'm still going to push the washing hands because it's, it's really, really important. It sounds a very simple measure. Uh, but what uh, I'm sure over the course of this week is the government will announce some much more specific measures because we have been looking very intently at uh, just advice for older people and how we can support them to stay uh, more uh, 
uh, potentially a little bit more uh, isolated, but uh, but supported. Tell us now. What, uh, what should they be doing? Well, I would be predicting what the Prime Minister well, is going to that. say. Well, I'm not intending to because uh, we're still looking at what the evidence would be and exactly which groups yeah, of individuals... He's taking your advice, isn't he? So he is, what advice and we're you still looking him? at the numbers and which groups of individuals are most likely to need the most support. And that includes some very detailed looking at particular uh, clinical conditions, for example. Uh, it's very likely that we would have what we might call an an ultra-vulnerable group, people who have very specific medical conditions, uh, and then uh, the elderly and others with uh, chronic conditions. But, I mean, everyone watching you now as, will have turned the telly up, they'll have stopped what they're doing, they'll be thinking tens of thousands of people so, getting... So what So what now they do not need to do anything more than I've said, and the reason for that is uh, that as we go forward, it is absolutely critical that the timing of an intervention is right. So I think many of your viewers and many of the papers are reporting or considering why why are we delaying doing things we're actually not delaying we are planning the exact point at which is going to be the most effective to manage our health service uh, safely and to support as many people as we can during this disease. And when do you think that will be? When do you think you will So be? I think our Chief Medical Officer yesterday said that um, asking people to safely isolate at home is likely to be within 10 or 14 days, and a little bit later than that, there was likely to be uh, some specific advice for older people. OK, it's um, fascinating, Doctor. Thank you very much. We're trying not to be concerned. Be alert, but not alarmed. Exactly. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, 20 past.